We continue in the Christmas season with this wonderful celebration of the epiphany of the Lord, the manifestation of God's great love for us, and the child born at Bethlehem, and his offer of universal salvation. Thank you for joining us for this celebration of the Eucharist. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. peace be with you. And with your spirit. My friends, so that we might together more worthily enter into these sacred mysteries, let us acknowledge our sin. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you manifested God's great love for us in your birth at Bethlehem. Christ, have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the offer of universal salvation to all people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. We join with the angels in praying glory to God in the highest, Amen. and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who on this day revealed your only begotten Son to the nations by the guidance of a star, grant in your mercy that we who know you already by faith, may be brought to behold the beauty of your sublime glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Rise up in splendor, Jerusalem. Your light has come. The glory of the Lord shines upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick clouds cover the peoples. But upon you the Lord shines, and over you appears his glory. Nations shall walk by your light, and kings by your shining radiance. Raise your eyes and look about. They all gather and come to you. Your sons come from afar, and your daughters in the arms of their nurses. Then you shall be radiant at what you see. Your heart shall throb and, over, and overflow. For the riches of the sea shall be emptied out before you. The wealth of nations shall be brought to you. Caravans of camels shall fill you. Dromedaries of Median and Ephah, all from Sheba, shall come, bearing gold and frankincense, and proclaiming the praises of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. O God, with your judgment endow the king, and with your justice the king's son. He shall govern your people with justice, and your afflicted ones with judgment. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. Justice shall flower in his days, and profound peace till the moon be no more. May he rule from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. The kings of Tarshish and the Isles shall offer gifts. The kings of Arabia and Seba shall bring tribute. All kings shall pay him homage. All nations shall serve him. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. For he shall rescue the poor when he cries out, and the afflicted when he has no one to help him. He shall have pity for the lowly and the poor. The lives of the poor he shall save. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for your benefit, namely, that the mystery was made known to me by revelation. 
It was not made known to people in other generations, as it is, has now been revealed, to his holy apostles and the prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles are co-heirs, members of the same body, and co-partners in the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. We saw his star at its rising and have come to do him homage. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. When Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of King Herod, behold, Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem, saying, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star at its rising, and have come to do him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was greatly troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. Assembling all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it has been written through the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, since from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and ascertained from them the time of the star's appearance. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the child. When you have found him, bring me word that I too may go and do him homage. After their audience with the king, they set out. And behold, the star that they had seen at its rising preceded them, until it came and stopped over the place where the child was. They were overjoyed at seeing the star, and on entering the house they saw the child with Mary his mother. They prostrated themselves and did him homage. Then they opened their treasures and offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed for their country by another way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Today we celebrate this wonderful solemnity feast of the Epiphany, a celebration that in some ways is even more ancient than the celebration of Christmas. Epiphany encompassed the celebration of the birth of the Lord, but eventually time in history, Christmas would become separate from the Epiphany and its own celebration. But the Feast of the Epiphany, which means manifestation or revelation, is that time when we remember that Jesus is revealed and he is adored by the Magi, these foreigners from the East who come seeking the newborn king. As I hear the reading of our gospel today and reflect upon this wonderful event of the Epiphany, I'm struck by the reality that the three kings, as the popular song calls them, are not the only kings who were searching the newborn king, Jesus. We heard in our gospel that King Herod is also seeking to find the newborn king but for very different reasons 
from the Magi. We can be struck by the stark difference between how the three Magi seek the Lord and how Herod seeks the Lord. We could say that Herod has a downward gaze. Herod's primary focus is on his own political importance, his own territory, his own kingdom, if we want to use that term. Herod is only concerned about his own power and possessions, protecting himself from this rival to his authority, ending this threat to his own political importance. This is what drives King Herod. And we can see that Herod deals in secrecy, meeting with the Magi secretly, St. Matthew writes, to determine when the star appeared. It's almost as if he knows his deeds belong to darkness. Herod is driven only by selfish ambition and the anxiety that he feels from this threat to his authority, the very thing that has become the totality of his identity. Although Herod pretends to want to go and adore the newborn king, he only serves his own desires. And we know from Scripture later on that Herod and the slaughter of the holy innocents really makes known his intentions. Herod's life is marked by hypocrisy, and Herod is constantly plagued by worry, by fear, which ultimately drain and exhaust him. Herod has a downward gaze, looking only after his own selfish desires. The Magi, on the other hand, operate very differently from King Herod. Rather than saying a downward gaze, their focus is upward to the heavens. They search the stars, looking beyond themselves for meaning and purpose in life, seeking to know the great mysteries of the world. As soon as their upward gaze led them to see the star, the Magi set out. Just as Mary and Joseph responded to the call of the Lord, the Magi left with great simplicity, no hesitation, focused on doing what God's manifestation was inviting them to do. The Magi are not drawn into the duplicity that characterizes Herod. The Magi sought the truth, and when they found it, they didn't hesitate to adore it, to bow down to it, to follow it, rather than being indifferent or rejecting the truth in preference of their own power, authority, or security. And this experience with God brings them an incredible joy. The text says that they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. It's at pains to show just how much the Magi were impacted by their encounter with the Christ child. And it's drastically different from King Herod's more selfish experience, drastically different from Herod's anxiety. The Magi know joy, and Herod knows fear and anxiety. And in their three gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh, they reveal their faith in the newborn king. They adore him as God, and they even, with the presentation of myrrh, that thing that was used to embalm bodies, 
the oil of myrrh, they announce his coming death. So both Herod and the Magi saw the same star, but that one star brought about two different effects, one in Herod, one in the Magi. What appears as light to those who seek the truth is also a condemnation to those who deal in darkness. Because Herod was a prisoner to his own selfish desires, the light could not shine in him or through him. The light was blocked in Herod, but for the Magi, they received it and they rejoiced in it. If I ever hope to find something, if you ever hope to find something, we have to first begin looking for it. To understand the answer, I usually first have to know and ask the question. Without that, whatever I receive will be received as an empty silence. My dear friends, today's Feast of the Epiphany, as I said, literally means a revelation, a manifestation. It's a manifestation of the wonder and mystery of the Incarnation, the manifestation of God's love revealed in the birth of the Messiah, the manifestation of truth born at Bethlehem. Today we celebrate the fact that Jesus Christ born a child, now reveals himself to all of humanity, to all who seek him. Jesus gives the answer. The question for us is precisely this. Do I seek? Do I ask the question? And perhaps more important, am I willing to respond to the answer to that question? that God might give. I think it's true, and I hope it's true, that none of us wants to hide in the shadows. None of us wants to exhaust ourselves with fear and worry like Herod did. Jesus reveals himself today to the whole world to offer us a hand, an invitation, so that we no longer will have to live in fear and anxiety. We no longer have to find our own answers to the difficult questions of meaning and life that plague us. Jesus is that answer, and he wants us to accept him as the answer. All we have to do is to give him a chance. May Jesus Christ manifest himself today in our lives. May we each have our own epiphanies, our own experiences of God's loving presence in the shadows around us. May the light of the child born at Bethlehem guide us to his love, where we will find peace and joy, just as the Magi did. Amen. As one family in faith, we profess the faith of our baptism, and so we pray. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God has revealed his love for us, rejoicing in that love and standing on our trust in his mercy. Let us make known to the Lord these areas of our need. For the church, may the Holy Spirit continue to uphold her as a place of refuge for all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in public office, may God, may God guide them in being humble servants of their people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have turned from God may receive the grace of conversion during this Christmas season. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all parishioners throughout our diocese and those watching this Mass, may, God, may Christ dwelling among us draw us ever more deeply to Him. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who have died may through the mercy of God rest in eternal peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We continue to pray for all of our brothers and sisters whose lives are broken or wounded by natural disaster, especially those who continue to recover from Hurricane Ida. That they will know God's courage, comfort, and strength as they rebuild their homes, rebuild their lives, rebuild their communities, and that they will receive the assistance they need. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Almighty God, in you we place our hope and trust. Hear and answer us, for these and all things we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look with favor, Lord, we pray on these gifts of your church, in which you're offered now not gold or frankincense or myrrh, but he who by them is proclaimed, sacrificed, and received, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For today you have revealed the mystery of our salvation in Christ as a light for the nations. And when he appeared in our mortal nature, you made us new by the glory of his immortal nature. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we proclaim the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. 
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true celebrating the most sacred day on which your only begotten Son, eternal with you in glory, appeared in a human body, truly sharing our flesh, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John, and Paul, Cosmas, and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with his eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants, and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them. As once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, 
the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant to them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellanus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints, admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with, with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Prayer for a spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. 
Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Go before us with heavenly light, O Lord, always and everywhere, that we may perceive with clear sight and revere with true affection the mystery in which you have willed us to participate through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. As always, thank you for your enduring faith. Thank you for your participation in this televised celebration of the Eucharist. Thank you for your ongoing generosity to our parish communities. May the Lord in this season of Christmas and on this great solemnity of the Epiphany manifest his love for you in ways that you see and realize and rejoice in. The Lord be with you. And with, and with your spirit. spirit. May Almighty God bless you this day and always the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and proclaim the gospel with your life. Thanks, Thanks be to, to God. God.